The Advanced Healing Course, Day 5. Welcome everybody back. Um, yesterday we talked about the first ray of the seven primordial rays, which is the ray of divine will, the red ray overlit by El Moria. Today I'm going to be discussing with you the second ray, the complementary, the, the obvious and ultimate complement of divine will, which of course is divine love. I'm going to be explaining what I understand the Masters have shown me um, about this ray and how it may be effectively utilised and the energy and the understanding of the nature of these rays as they enter the, the, the um, more viscous levels of slowed down light, the dimensions which we perceive through our cognitive senses. So the second ray is the blue ray of divine love the blue ray of divine love and it is overlit by the master historically known as lord kutumi the chohan of the second ray lord kutumi mentioned at length and photographed with the great theosophic founder madame blavatsky helena madame blavatsky in the late 19th century so when we talk about love, somebody once asked me to give a definition of the word love. Okay, now the Greeks had words for different types of love and that actually was quite useful because you have a, a word like eros, which is romantic love. You have another word which means love within the family. Um, so they differentiated it because love in the lower dimensions are below the abyss invariably is partial because it, although it's we're moving towards the unity it, it, it is a movement that is, is still partial as as there is movement when we transcend movement we go to above the abyss and we enter the quantum field so there is the all pulsating true nature of love and yet it still may shine through the lower dimensions as a unifying force so we have eros for romantic love and we have the highest form of love, which is known as agape. Agape love is unconditional love. And what that means is, when we talk about unconditional love, we're talking about love without attachment, love without agenda, love without it being subject to something happening. I'll only love you if you love me. <laughs> Codependency love how most, most people do operate in the world. It's easy to love somebody that loves us. It's easy to love something that's nice and kind and friendly. Easy. Not so easy to love something that's difficult, obstreperous, cantankerous, resistant. But the pure, unconditional love, for even those people that, that, that hold those qualities, is the love of the soul, the recognition by the advanced perception of the master. That actually, as Jesus Christ said, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. So having that level of understanding and wisdom and non-emotional attachment to see beyond the immediate is a, is, a, is a quality of the agape love. We love without condition. Okay? We love without condition. In the meantime, life goes on. I describe love as the energy that facilitates union. The energy that facilitates union. In other words, it is the drive towards union, the attraction that creates a greater thing. When we have sex, we make love. The idea, okay, on an energetic level is that we transcend the separation between the two partners to create and unite in an orgasmic greater thing, the orgasmic bliss of the samadhi. If we have a tantric experience, if we're fortunate enough to get to that level, we should experience at least some degree of samadhi during the sexual process. I'm giving this simply as an example. Love is about transcending difference, transcending the illusion of separation. It, it's a unifying force. It, it overcomes hatred. The differences that we share or have between us are based as a result of 
the incompleteness of our karmic path, that we haven't yet experienced all things. Therefore, our perceptions, our actions, our reactions are the results of partial insights into the nature of reality. Those partial insights into the nature of polarity produce polarised results. Polarity, polarised results require love to transcend them. In other words, we come from a point or a set of a point of view. Love, however, can help us transcend the mental differences that we may have between us. So my side is right and yours is wrong. When we sit down and let go, let go of the pre-held beliefs about things and engage from a heart-centered place, we can merge and gain rapport and understanding of another's position. We may not ultimately agree with everything they say, but we can come to an understanding and approach to them that celebrates our similarities, Lucinda, to celebrate the similarities that we have. The fact that we are all human souls on an evolutionary path. We have different backgrounds, different histories, different astrological makeups, different karmic paths, and yet we do share similarities. And as those that believe, or at least would like to believe that they're light workers, taking the path of change and transformation and multidimensional awareness, the focus has to be on celebrating the similarities between us, on looking at where we can work together to cooperate rather than to compete. Okay, there's different viewpoints. And rather than saying that one is better than the other, understanding that what might be appropriate in 1975 may not be appropriate in 1985 or 2005 or 2019, where we are now. There are always differences, okay? And things, this is a universe where we have to learn to be flexible. And yet, within that flexibility, we need to understand that the universe does have structure. It does have a nature. There are rules within the scientific processes that we need to understand and obey or work within or work around, but nonetheless understand and recognize. Contracts. There are rules. Gravity, there are forces that affect us. Gravity is one of them, electromagnetic force, atomic force and quantum gravity. And the energy vectors of the vast elemental forces interacting facilitate the nature okay, of our light bodies. Our light bodies are the result of a vehicle that has been constructed to enable us to traverse space and time and for our soul to experience this level of the viscosity of the slowed down light of this dimension, to understand and ex expand the soul's knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom comes over time with experience. To have a truly encapsulating experience, we need to utilize love. Why? Because if we always do, we all know people who are very single-minded and don't want to see another person's point of view. They're kind of irritating people, really. People who engage in fundamentalist religion, fundamental, my way's right, your way's wrong, are not displaying love. They're refuting it, in fact because love will meld, it, will meld the differences. It does not mean to say that we're going to end up in some homogenized, beige, lovey goo. Forget that idea. Quite the contrary, love actually strengthens the will and harmonizes it. It enables the will to operate in a realistic and um, open environment and find its natural fruition. So love is the feminine component, the, co the feminine companion of the so-called masculine will. When I say masculine, please do not misunderstand. Will is a driving force, so maybe compared to a yang energy, and yet there is yin will, and there's also masculine love. So just in very generic terms, we sometimes think about the positive and the receptive, rather, I'll say receptive rather than negative, okay? And the positive is sometimes referred to as a male or yang quality. But that doesn't mean to say we cannot be a man and experience the reverse of that. 
because in this new age of enlightenment, this new age or aeon or eon of expanded awareness, we can be the Renaissance man or the Renaissance woman. We can act and operate, transcend the previously expected polarized views or polarized expectations of what we can be as a physical man or what we should be as a physical woman. The male has the capability to experience qualities which previously may have been considered feminine. And conversely, women have the qualities to experience what previously may have been considered, sociologically speaking, as masculine. We actually have the capability with the left and the right hand sides of the brain to experience scientific, focused, linear thinking and open, creative, intuitive thinking. It's not the domain of one particular gender. I just want to make that clear. It's very important. Love is the force that unites all things. It is the receptive energy, if you like, that attracts rather than promotes. Love is a force of attraction. Okay. And when I say it's the energy that facilitates union, let me explain. On the tree of life, <clears throat> love is associated in the manifest world with the Sephirah Hesed, C-H-E-S-E-D, the blue Sephirah or manifestation of Godhead called Hesed. Okay, and Hesed is barren, balanced on the tree of life with Gebura, the red Martian energy of will. So love and will are extrapolated into two polarities, which we, our job as light workers is to harmonize. It is below the abyss. In other words, it's below the complete somatic experience. So it's the rush, if you like, towards unity that love is. It's the rushing force that unites us, that unifies us, that celebrates our difference, that calms us, that recognises the other in the other, or ourselves in the other, that has the panoramic wisdom to, to see beyond the limitations of our own minds and witness through the open, expanded gnosis of the heart the greater universal continuum. And in so doing, we may step outside of the limitations of the negative ego mind. Step outside the small I in favour of the big O, the great universal continuum, and recognise our place as sentient beings within that continuum as having a very, very tiny, tiny little part, but a part nonetheless that is important. And yet having a perspective is what love gives us. It gives us the perspective. It gives us the true compassion. Delivers the true compassion to step beyond the temporal, beyond the immediate, beyond our own limited frameworks in the temporary nature of our journey through the space-time continuum in the current incarnation. Love rushes towards the unity of the supernal triad on the tree of life. It is Hesed, it is sitting below. And thus there is the famous maxim, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. Now some ask me, why should love be subservient, which it appears to be in that particular quote to will it's not subservient it is only in the sense of the partial love or the love in the lower dimensions rushing towards the completed unity the completed unity is when divine will is that is the completed unity and at that juncture where it is our beyond space and time the quantum world of infinite light love and will become as one in Kabbalistic doctrine, in ancient Greek, agape, gematria, that is the letters adding up as a way to decode and understand the vibration of the word, and thelema, agape and thelema or thelema, both add up to the word, the number 93, that represents the triplicity 
of 31. 31 is Aleph Lamed, God or Goddess. Okay. When we unite the three elements of the Goddess, we have the supreme, supernal triad. The supreme, supernal triad. And the three elements are agape, belima. Remind me what belima is. Will. Will. Will and love unite to create a third thing, which is the consciousness that exists when the polarities have been transcended. So below the abyss we have will in its pure form, but with, if it's not tempered with the Jupiter energy of love, it becomes a tyrannical force. Okay, and conversely, if love is not tempered with the true nature of will, it becomes sentimental, soppy, people-pleasing. Okay, we both know characters or people who have exhibited those partial qualities. The idea of this work is to integrate the love and the will, the will and the love. And as I mentioned in yesterday's um, small lecture, what we are attempting to do in the great work is develop our relationship with the rays in an expanded form and when we do that, we will be able to perform what others may describe as miracles. But to do that, first of all, we have to work on ourselves. To go through the process of working and developing a relationship with each of the rays through not just the 12 light bodies of what I call dimension one, but with all 144 light bodies of the 12 dimensions. In this way, we can utilize love in an expanded and harmonic way. I will say this. All of the rays have negative qualities attached to them. The unbalanced nature of them okay, can be demonstrated. So as I mentioned, will, unbalanced is um, tyr tyrannical behaviour. Or it could be controlling or manipulation. Um, love, sentimentality, um, obsequiousness. Um, creativity could be self-indulgence, for example, and I could go on. Science could become reductionism gone crazy. You know, we've seen scientists like that. Devotion can become idealism. Ide idealism that has um, no room for alternatives, and I could carry on. All of the rays have lower manifestations if they're not properly tempered and harmonised. Because we're talking about primordial forces here. Primordial forces of Godhead that have a primal nature. Okay? But understanding those forces and working with the harmonics of them, we can utilise the raw material of source and creatively manifest a life that it has is of great health, happiness, wealth and vitality and good relationships. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, with love, just as with will, each of the rays has a master that works with that ray to enable the recipient to utilise the power of the ray in the most appropriate way possible. And the master of the second ray, the master of the second ray is Lord Katumi. The ray of love is blue. Okay. The master of the second ray is Lord Katumi. The ray of will is red and the combination of the two creates the alchemical child the will the love and the child of alchemy is the co-creator transformational force that utilizes pure true divine will using love as the vehicle for its manifestation and in that way we can be the alchemical child the co-creator that transmutes and transforms the environment with the correct use of the first two primordial rays, the will and the love. Mm. And when we transcend the abyss, when we transcend the separation of the polarities, when we've united and integrated the love and the will, we become as one. The love and the will are as one. And it is interesting because at those levels of dimensional existence, 
the angels are considered to have no will, meaning that because they're so aligned to the true, their own true nature, there is only the manifestation at that level of dimensional frequency of the unity. Therefore, in a sense, they have no will, they are the will. It is only at this level of dimension, at this level of slow down light and duality, that the sense of separation, the illusion of separation may be perceived. We call this free will because we have the opportunity to act not into flow. We have the opportunity to act in accordance with only our own personal requirements, the lower chakras. We have the opportunity to obey only our lower selves and immediate desires if we choose. It is folly. Ultimately, it will be folly because we're sacrificing the great for the temporal. We're sacrificing the quantum perception of the infinite intelligence in favour of a limited <clears throat> temporary belief system acquired only through our cognitive minds and personal karma. In other words, we're setting ourselves against the grand order of design or Godhead. We are, in fact, becoming the devil, the double. But it's partial. Okay? The great work is about uniting and bringing together the disparate elements to facilitate heaven on earth, even at this dimensional level. But we need both. We need both. Both? The will, the, 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 the higher energy and the lower energy of the will. So long as it's absolutely. Done. This process is about... You wouldn't be able to procreate. Absolutely. Yet, yet this process... That desire to have. Absolutely. And what we're doing is we're going through a process... Absolutely, and it's a recalibration process. It's not a denial process. My work is never about <laughs> denial. It's always about celebration. People that deny themselves consciously, from my experience, usually have an element of your neurosis in the field. They may be holding guilt. They may be holding karmic imprints. They may be holding fear. Usually a combination of those factors. So when we accept and surrender, that's not about denial, it's about integration. Integration is about pulling all the elements together and harmonizing them. It's like saying, be spiritual or be earthly. We can be birthed, what we can do is we can spiritualize the earth because the, the spirit exists within the planet and the spiritualization of it is not denying the flesh, it's accepting and integrating the flesh. So a lot of religious systems, particularly in the patriarchal age, such as religious, religious systems that I, I have a fondness for on many levels, and yet they often manifest denial practices. Hinduism, for example. Christianity, so-called, Christendom, for example. Uh, and, and other systems often deny the flesh and say the flesh is wrong. The Cathars were one of them, for example that created a dualistic religious system that denied and separated earth and called it the devil. But in fact, the devil is actually Pan. Pan, the devil of, of the Christendom, was the god of nature. So rather than saying that nature is evil, it's much better to utilise love and recognise the incredible complexity and beauty of the lower manifest realms and utilising love as the, the balm that will heal the temporal disparity of our mind when we perceive or we think there is a separation in the Maya consciousness. And it's only because of the subjective nature of the limitations. This work is about magic and mysticism. From my experience and expectation, the mystical, the problem of the mystic, if they do not incorporate the magic, is we can all potentially go to somewhere like India or somewhere beautiful and meditate for a certain amount of time and experience a degree of samadhi or unity with the universe. That is a beautiful and wonderful thing to do. Don't get me wrong. However, we are incarnate beings. If we live in an urban environment or if we live in the UK, for example, as many of us do who are watching this, you know, it's not always easy to integrate the spiritual experience. 
So the magical work is about finding ways to bring the love from heaven, rather than denying the earth to get to heaven, bringing the heaven to earth, bringing the love of the infinite. So it manifests and harmonizes even the simplest, most basic, sometimes very mundane things can be harmonized and can with loving nature and the trueness of the heart be expanded to their maximum potential, even in this dimension. If every human being on this planet was to do that and follow those principles as best they could, believe me, the planet would transform in no time. Believe me, it would. Unfortunately, what has happened, we are in a separation complex. People are, are limited by their own immediate desires in most cases. Sometimes it's just a survival instinct, the need to survive. Other times it's emotional disparity, uncertainty, neurotic complexes, peer pressure, programming, toxins in the environment, toxins in the food, toxins in the pharmaceutical industry, toxins in, in the way the operating systems are run. They're not run around love, around caring, around consideration. And then all the political nonsense that emerges from those separation complexes that imposes itself and people become then part of tribalism, which again is a form of separation. This work, paradoxically, celebrates the individual. It does celebrate the individual nature, the pure, true wood of that. And yet, by celebrating the individual in its truest form, what is actually being stated is that we can find and connect with a greater harmony. So unity consciousness is the recognition of the interconnectedness of all things. It's not about putting everything into an egalitarian nutribullet and turning it beige into some homogenized goo. It's not about that, my friends, ever, 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 ever. What it is about is looking at the universe and saying, let's be a mirror of the beauty and magnificence of this universe. And if you look at the universe, what you do see is you get a star system like the sun and the seven main planets around it. And the nearest star is a massive four light years away. That takes light four years to reach us from it. Whereas it only takes eight and a half minutes for the light of the sun to reach the earth. So what that demonstrates to me is the universe has these what we call scientists call strange attractors. Things coagulate around their essential iterating nature and that's how form emerges. The nature of things, the uniqueness and the beauty emerges because of the form that coagulates around itself and its strange attractor, the soul of a planet, the soul of a star. So we're never denying those things. We're never saying that things should be not of their nature. We, re we refuse the curse of egalitarianism with this work, okay? That everything is equal, that is, a, that is a nonsense. Nothing is equal, everything is different, and yet each should have the equal ability and never be subjugated by another. The true will should not be subjugated. So in that sense, we are all equal in the eyes of the Lord, of the infinite intelligence. And yet we are all at different points on our evolutionary path. If we look back at our lives, for example, I cannot say I was the same as when I was 10, but the egalitarian would have us say that. Love can transcend those differences while celebrating them. That's the unique beauty of the loving ray. And if we can call in Lord Katumi, we can celebrate the beauty and differences between us without having an imposition that negatively impacts our personal will, which a communist would want to do, or a fascist would want to do. They would want us to worship a th the thing called the state. They would want us to worship a man-made creation. That is not what this work is about. These are the primordial rays that actually have the keys for us to live a life of happiness, health, joy, and peace within ourselves. And our structures could be built around those, but we don't ever want to be imprisoned by them because love is the liberating force. 
When people love, they are liberated from the confines of the limitations of their mind. Love is the force that permeates from the heart. It opens us up to the Gnostic flow of the universal continuum. The illuminated knowledge that has the power to open us to our true potential. That, my friends, is love. And I just encourage you all to call in Lord Katumi, the Blue Ray, to match the brilliance of El Moria, the Red Ray. Divine love.